Hi, this is Laura Bernard from Contact Sports Canada's Martial Arts Supply Store. Today we're going to talk about Chinese broadswords and how to buy them and the different qualities yeah. involved. The broadswords in Chinese we call Dao in Mandarin and Cantonese called Dou. Our base model is made out of polypropylene, a very strong plastic. This is the latest thing in the martial arts business. Uh, it's replacing the wooden swords which basically broke rather easily. So um, there's just no reason to buy wooden swords anymore with, with this item on the market. Uh, I also believe it's quite good for the two-man steps if you have sword against spear, or sword against halberd, or sword against uh, staff. This is the ideal training tool, and they're quite inexpensive, so uh, I'm pretty sure this will be a popular one. Then we have aluminum. This is an aluminum nine-ring broadsword. Aluminum is light. This is fairly well balanced, uh, um, and it's inexpensive. The only drawback with aluminum is that if it bends because you're careless or you did a, an exercise against another weapon, it's bent, you'll never get it back straight. So the advantage is it doesn't rust. Some of the swords we're going to show later are actually real metal and, and they, they, they can rust, especially if people who don't know go and put their fingerprints all over them. That, that's a mistake. So uh, the rings, we call nine ring broadsword. Why are there rings? Well, in, in combat, if you just distract somebody for a moment, the sound of the ring the distraction, you already won the fight. Also, uh, sometimes the rings would hook into the spear tassels or other parts of people's weapons, you could pull and strike them again. The other one was a status symbol. Um, maybe a head of a clan or a big general would have the rings just to, to look cool, if you wish. This is, and again, relatively inexpensive uh, weapon. This is uh, Contact Sports, basically probably our best seller. It's a good quality rosewood scabbard what they call spring steel. Spring steel, well, it's springy. Now, when you buy broadswords, I should have mentioned this before, you should also look at how the broadsword up holds up. So in traditional Kung Fu, you're going to want something that doesn't bend too much. So this is right on the limit. They probably let it in most traditional tournaments, but it's close. Very close. The Wushu spring steel will bend even more so. Uh, if we compare it, for example, to this, you see it won't bend at all. So this for sure is correct in a traditional tournament. Uh, this one, it really depends on the tournament organizers. It's, I think it'll pass, regardless. Okay, this one is moderately priced and it's spring steel. Spring steel means it can rust and it's springy. And it means it doesn't break, it's not very hard to break. It's also quite well balanced. And the good news is in the old days we did get these swords from China that would be loose here and loose here and people would try to fix it by tightening the bolt and they would probably break this area. Uh, so this one model is pretty much exempt of all these problems. So hence it is our best seller, I would say. Here's an, maybe a slightly higher quality. The different scabbard, but the scabbard's about the same quality. Again, spring steel, quite stiff. I won't put it on the ground. Um, and again, quite solid, which is what people want. Now, just because something's loose isn't the end of the world, you just have to fix it. But of course, when you're buying swords, you don't want to be fixing something you just bought, which is perfectly understandable. You have to understand that most swords are made in China, and uh, they're handmade, and literally, you know, they're not all the same from one to the other. Next model, now we're getting more than $100, uh, is a, a, again, a very hot selling item is a chrome, so you're not gonna have the issue of rusting. It looks nice. It's very, a bit uh, lighter than the other ones, and the balance is excellent. So, this is really a nice rod. A, a nice rod sword, there's just no doubt about it. Unfortunately, only one length. However, the length is about standard. Uh, basically, when you hold a broad sword, don't, if you see somebody holding it like that, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Normally, you wanna hold it like this, and the tip should be about the ear. Now, this is just the standard. If it's shorter or longer, it's all right. It's not a big deal. If you go on the battlefield, you're not going to lose because your sword is long or your sword is so short. We're just saying, generally speaking, that's what you're looking for. So this one was made for your average person like myself who's 5 feet 10. Now we're going to the very high end. We're lucky because 20 years ago, there was no high end. These swords is a Cass Hanway broadswords, which we carry at uh, Compact Sports. The, the scabbard is extremely good quality. Brass fittings everywhere. The broadsword is also brass fittings. 
it's not razor sharp, but it's, it's sharp enough that if you do this, your friend will be going to the hospital. So this is a, a dangerous weapon to practice with, actually. So if you practice with this, um, you either put something on the edge. Some people use a, the lining of a, of a, they put these plastic things on the ed edge of, for car doors. You can use that, or you're very careful. But uh, again, if you're a beginner, I do not recommend this weapon because this is a weapon. This is a, this is really a weapon. Uh, it's a little short, but it's again, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal, and the quality is excellent. And this is I'm quite a bit more expensive, basically. And I hope you uh, enjoyed the ideas for the broadswords. So again, you basically get what you pay for. Um, and oh, by the way, sometimes we'll talk about two-person sets, for example. Broadsword against spear or broadsword against staff. Which broadsword is good? Honestly, as soon as you start hitting things, uh, all the weapons pay the price. So if I hit the the the, uh, the person's spear with the edge of my blade, there's going to be chips of wood flying out every time. So sometimes we'll kind of like mimic it. Sometimes, uh, um, uh, or just the, eventually your sword's going to have full of dead. So this is just something you're going to have to accept. Perhaps. This is the way to do set fighting, it's just because it doesn't really damage the spear and, uh, and these are inexpensive and I, I don't believe they're going to be very easy to break. They are really solid. So I think this is the wave of the future for two-man sets. And last but not least, we have the double broadswords or swan down. So swan down, there, there's, there's not much choice out there. There's the what we call a contemporary wushu grade, which are very uh, floppy. and they're not expensive. The problem is they're so floppy that when you do the flowers, it's just kind of wobbling all over the place. So really, it's save your money and spend a little bit more and get the right product at something good. Uh, this particular model is made out of spring steel uh, and it's quite solid. And as you see, it's not wobbling all over the place. Uh, that means you have to keep it clean. If you touch it with your hands or it leans against your arm, which is a very typical thing, you need to wipe it off maybe with some uh, sword oil, which we sell here at Contact Sports, like four or five dollars. Uh, people just don't have a choice. This is, we only sell one or two grades, and, 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 and we're comfortable with that because we know it's a fine product. So anyways, if you want to learn more about our broadswords, Chinese broadswords, and all the other equipment, come and see us at contactsports.com. Thank you.